my dad who's a retired oral surgeon watches these videos let me just reassure you dad i'm safe got the full protection and i do go slow when i can so no worries <laughs> It's sure been a crazy year. I must tell you, we had the pandemic going on. Uh, of course, we, uh, every world Indo have been pretty busy, developed a few new products, filed a few patents and so on. This is a special video I wanted to make for uh, just our YouTube viewers here, because uh, while on our website and so on, we already had passed uh, this number, but on YouTube, we just got 50,000 subscribers. And I figured I would make this video especially for you because it seems like people on YouTube are a lot more active and they leave comments and they are very much encouraging on our website. Although we get the same number of views, people just tend to kind of just watch the content and uh, move on. But on YouTube, people are very interactive. And I really love that about you guys, our subscribers on YouTube. So thank you, this video is for you. By the way, that thing is called and you see it's one of the new hobbies I've developed over the pandemic is I've tried to learn and do different things maybe I'll share with you some of those uh, hobbies and things like that I've done in a different video today what I want to do is to have a little continuation and talk about the second part of apical gauging and possibly talk about a case so let's go inside where things are a little bit uh, quieter obviously and we can talk about that all right Let's sit down here and talk a little bit about endo here. Let's get to our tutorial today. So as I mentioned before, for our 50th, uh, 50,000 member kind of a uh, video, I wanted to do a continuation being here in New Hampshire. The previous video that I made on this topic of apical gauging that I wanted to continue on was on just some of the concepts and theory behind apical gauging. And that generated a lot of questions and uh, conversation about, well, you know, I've been told that I need to have like a size minimum 25 at the apex or a size 35 would suffice. And that kind of made me think that let's go quickly again over this topic, maybe show you a case and talk a little bit about apical gauging again, because it's so important. What should the apex or master apical diameter of a file end up being is not something that's universally accepted or true for every case or every tooth. The reality of it is that what we need to do is we need to custom make that decision. Part of this called kind of a custom treatment planning that we do in endodontics is the fact that we not only choose what is the perfect apical diameter for a given tooth, but also a given canal in each tooth. And that could be different in each tooth and each root in each person. So not to make this too confusing here, but there's a process by which we go through to make this decision. But before we get ahead of ourselves here, let's just quickly go through a little concept, a conceptual understanding of what we're trying to do, and then see what are the ways we can achieve this goal. So uh, we know these series of images here from the American Society of Adonis, and these are what we show to our patients, the idea of what we're doing in root canal therapy is the concept of removing all the bacteria, cleaning and shaping, disinfecting inside of the root and then obturating it so the tooth has to get restored. But at a closer look, this is really not just a robust mechanical or macroscopic procedure we're doing. Ultimately, the goal of what we're trying to achieve is to remove the biofilm. And the biofilm in each tooth is the way the bacteria settles on the root surfaces. And bacteria settles in very deterministic ways to create biofilms on surfaces because bacteria and microbes have found over the years or over the era and evolution that this way they can create a more robust mechanism of survival against various environmental hazards. And, and this way, when bacteria settles on a surface, it creates this kind of a relationship of multiple different types of bacteria living together on the surface, creating a little sludge on the surface, the so-called extracellular proteinaceous kind of matrix. It's EPS, basically, and this protects them from even our air against sodium hypochlorite. So that's why what we need to do is not to just merely bathe the area of the biofilm with sodium hypochlorite, but rather mechanically disrupted in the form of ultrasonics and so on. But the most efficient way of doing this is through physical touch. And that happens through the idea of cutting that surface off with the blade of a nickel titanium instrument, which is really not too different from what happens when you have a 
burnt toast, a piece of toast, and then you try to remove the surface with a knife, that is what we're trying to do with during instrumentation. There is cleaning that occurs during the shaping process, as well as the disinfection process. So cleaning and shaping biomechanical disinfection is a kind of a combination term. And that's where the idea of gauging the apical area is very important. Because while many of the canals are fairly oval all around the coronal two thirds of the root, Towards the apex, the, there is difference in the nature of the dentin. You don't have as many dental tubules and the canals tend to become more conical in general. So that apical diameter that lasts two to three millimeters, if we can cork that out to a diameter that kind of cleans it out beyond its normal diameter and then remove that little, almost like what a geologist does with taking an earth sample, taking a core sample of the earth, do that from the apical area of the root, we can remove the biofilm most efficiently right at the apex in that manner. So we don't have as many dental tubules there. That's a big savior and part of the reason why root canal therapy is so successful because the dentin quality is different in the apical one third of the root than it is in the coronal half of the root. So the idea is to wipe these instruments, this layer of biofilm, as you can see here in this image, clean. And that happens with a instrument that is gauged to match the shape and diameter of the apex right there and then maybe increasing it by a couple of sizes that helps us dig clean into the dentin and end up with clean circumference in that area. So that is the goal, but how do we do it? And as I mentioned before, ideally the way we do our apical gauging is through creating our shape initially first. You don't gauge right at the beginning because it's very difficult to tell with your first file. What you would do is you first create a shape, remove some of the coronal restrictions, and then what you would do is you would use O2 tapered nickel titanium hand files so that they don't taper, they don't kind of bind at the top, but they're only gauging at the apex. And sometimes instead of using that, you could use even files that have no taper, such as some of the reverse conicity files or no taper files such as light speed or anything that is only gauging at the apex. So you can find out exactly where that binding is taking place and what is the diameter of the root at the apex. But since that is a set of extra processes and it's very difficult for people, we can say in smaller canals, you know, aside the size 25 to 35 is a fairly good gauging to go through. But the most difficulty I've found people have is gauging the larger canals in the anterior area where people come in and tell me, well, I mean, I was told in this lecture by so-and-so that all I need to do is to finish cases to a size 25 apex. My chemomechanical irrigation is gonna finish the job. Well, the reality of it is that your chemomechanical instrumentation, it is true that you can chemically clean those areas that you haven't touched, but that's the essence of doing a two-visit treatment. If you're going to do two-visit treatment, then you need to definitely incorporate a higher layer of chemical disinfection in the form of calcium hydroxide, or uh, any other kind of a um, disinfection protocol that will enhance it because the so-called minimal invasive preparations nowadays that everybody's having, based on many studies, it's now showing us that we're leaving bacteria behind by doing minimal invasive preparations. So that's why anyone doing minimal invasive preparations should definitely consider doing cases in two visits by allowing the bathing of the fluids in calcium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide-like medications so that you can get better disinfection in the areas you haven't touched. Of course, you could use three-dimensional instrumentation, but again, that's a whole different area. For people using conventional instrumentation and interested in doing cases in a single visit rather than multiple visits with calcium hydroxide, then now all of a sudden it's more important for you to do proper apical gauging and engagement of the apical three millimeter of the root, physically cleaning that area out with these round instruments. So let me show, demonstrate this long talk here with an example here. So we have a tooth here, tooth number eight, which is your central right central incisor, that in this case, as you can see, has a large apical lesion, is necrotic. It does have a fairly large apical diameter. Just looking from the x-ray, you can tell this is a fairly white in a young patient that had a history of trauma and has had these crowns. Of course, the crowns are not quite as well fitting as I would like to, to be honest. And you can see even on the left central incisor, there's an open area. So this was explained to the patient at the time about the importance of replacing these crowns at some point down the line as soon as possible, frankly, because otherwise there's the same fate of infection through micro leakage uh, that is awaiting tooth number nine, which is the other tooth. But here already, unfortunately, it's been too late for tooth number eight that has had a necrotic tooth. So let's get started and take a look and see how we manage apical gauging in these particular larger 
diameter cases that we start with and we know in the central incisor area. So, but first and foremost, as we start with measuring our estimated working length, here's about 22 millimeters. And we go to our Ribaldendo Modern Access Kit here and I use my 6801 DuraCut. Uh, this is a burr that has been designed to cut through these modern lithium disilicate and zirconia based crowns. And you take your time and then after the DuraCut burr, now we're going to use my 1557 burr, which is my outline form uh, burr. And I'm using that to first kind of just orient myself properly. And then now I've created the original out, the outline through the dentinal portion of this uh, underneath the crown. Then I'm using my E15D ultrasonic to just kind of smooth things out. I'm using the 6856 DuraCut here, which is a long diamond, to again create this uh, wider coronal diameter that is going to allow me to have straight line access because I don't want to have restrictions coronally here holding up my uh, file so that I can get proper apical diameter. And this is just the coronal area. This is no different than normal access. You really should be using a combination of your E15D and E14D ultrasonic tips here to help you achieve a much better type of a opening uh, on top. So now that we have a straight line axis, we begin with these 31 gauge side vented close ended uh, needles. I put a little bit of Triton, which is a new uh, irrigation solution. So I'm going to talk to you guys about in future videos. And uh, you can see here that we've measured the working length and the measured working length here is important with your apex locator, but then having that extra file shot is super important because if you can see here, of, uh, I'm looking at the x-ray with the file shot and it's showing me I have a straight line axis. As you saw, I didn't really, I just pushed that size 15 and it went down. So there was no restrictions. The diameter is larger than a size 15. I can tell already just from how easily that 15 went down to the apex and I measured the working length. So at this point, what I would do is I'm using a protocol in which I'm using a series of of O4 taper instruments and validating first the working length that is 22 millimeters so the pre estimate was right and I'm using this endo sequence O4 taper sizes 40 through 55 as a setup for gauging these larger apical diameters and what I'm doing is I start from the largest one I set the 55 and all of them to 22 millimeters and just see how far they go so by hand not even instrumenting I put the 5504 in there and it's like about three, four millimeters short of the working length. The 15 now is about three, two millimeters short of the working length. And my 45 is about a millimeter short of the working length. And the 40 goes actually to the full working length. This is without any instrumentation. Now I've gauged the apical area and I know what's going on. I put a little bit more sodium hypochlorite in there, which is the triton in, in this uh, particular case. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, leave the irrigation in there and I'm going to start from the 55 and since I know I have a path that's open to a size 40 my goal here is to get the 55 down to the apex I'm using this concept of a single uh, stroke and clean with the OTR set at about 0.2 uh, newton centimeter so it's doing forward kind of reciprocation here for me and I'm getting like about three reciprocation before I remove the file each time and you can see that the tip is engaged and I now I've cored out that area of the apex and now I'm at the full working length and each time I'm using the endo swipe to wipe and remove the uh, um, that dentin that's around in the flutes and now I'm irrigating again all the way to the apex and now once I'm at the apex what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, so this is just validates, my uh, 5504 stops at the full working length. And I'm doing now a little bit of lateral uh, wiping and cleaning so that I can clean coronally in the areas of the canal that are a little bit wider. And this is helping me, as you saw, with this single file 55, by just having validating the length with those other files that haven't been used, uh, they were not used, so I gauge the apex, and now that 55 is matched with its matching 55, uh, the biceramic cone, and now I'm locking that into place, and that is the full seating of the cone is confirmed to the full length of the um, um, of the file, the master file, and the apical uh, dryness is also confirmed with a matching paper point. So we have the right combination. We use that single 55 file to kind of gauge canal, go all the way down. And now I'm injecting a BC Cedar high flow coronally, and I'm using the same 5504 after having been disinfected. Now in a counterclockwise direction at 300 RPM to push the sealer down to the apex. 
and then slowly work my 55 down to the apex. And in this case, because the coronally, there was a little bit of extra room. Remember, hydraulic cone session is not a single cone technique, so I have a little bit more room, so I'm putting a 2504 additional cone on the side, and this is my working x-ray that shows that, that we have the, the two cones in there with the sealer, and it's filled to the apex and uh, just uh, using Endo Pro 270 melt off the gutta percha at the orifice, creating that nail head by coming in straight with a size 10 or 11 uh, file while the gutta percha is still hot um, at the orifice so that I end up spreading the gutta percha everywhere on the, at the orifice level and come back again with my um, ultrasonic and water to remove the excess sealer and come back with a size nine plugger to close off the seams uh, and making sure that there's no exposed sealer. An immediately BC liner is placed. You could etch and bond if you want it for a longer term. Otherwise, you could self-etch and self-bond. And uh, it is, you can see here, the final fill. And the apical diameter in this particular case right now appears adequately filled and in adequate size because it was gauged properly. Uh, and that really is the difference here. We used one working file, which was the 25, uh, which was the 15 at the beginning to get the working length and then use the 55. We determined that the 55 would be the master file and use that all the way down to the end. And that is really the key difference in this technique is that you're using the correct diameter file here to completely gauge the apex and enlarge it so that you can remove that amount of biofilm that's at the end of the route quickly. If you don't do that, so this is what ends up happening. If you just go, uh, we know that the first file that really fit the size of this canal, let's say this is the canal and the biofilm is lining it because it wasn't aquatic too, so there was biofilm in there. If we had just used the 25, which is what most people are uh, telling me, people out there have been telling them to use as your uh, minimum file size, what you would end up doing is your 25 would not be engaging any of the walls in the apical 3-4 millimeters. It would be coronally cutting perhaps, but apically it won't be cutting, so you are leaving all kinds of biofilm in place in these kinds of situations. So the 25 is inadequate, whereas if you had actually used the 55, as you can see here now all of a sudden, you have removed all of that dentin in that area and clean that out. And because it's an 04 taper, it's not removing coronally too much. So you're not weakening the tooth coronally, but you're achieving a very good apical diameter by going to a size that is engaging in the apical three millimeter of the root and cleaning it out completely. That's corking out that apical area and getting a nice and clean apical preparation. And that really what it's all about. Because if you don't do that is when you end up leaving enough biofilm behind. And especially nowadays, people are using all of these extra carriers with extra dense sealers so that it shows like you have a good fill, but you actually haven't cleaned it out adequately. And when you don't clean it out adequately is when you end up having cases that look good, but you still have biofilm left in the apical three, four millimeters. And those cases fail. As a result, you end up seeing cases that look and appear good, but they do have still persistent apical problems. And that's the key is removing that biofilm at the apical area of the root. So um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about in this video. I think we did go a little bit long. Uh, but I think it's worth it because this is a topic that is very, very important. We need to all consider the realities. We're not creating shapes on the x-rays. We're not just uh, trying to fill lateral canals or this or that, all these stuff that you've been told. There is a biological basis to what we're doing. At its core level right now, our understanding is that what we're trying to do in endodontic therapy is we're trying to remove that biofilm. So if you're going to remove that biofilm, you need to have an adequate apical diameter, which you can achieve either by having proper three-dimensional instrumentations we've talked about in previous videos, but that is a little bit more complicated for the average general dentist and that the, the three-dimensional instrumentation and all those other stuff could be good for uh, endodontists that are more savvy and they know how to manage the length and the cone fitting and all that stuff that comes along with it. But for other, for general dent the average general dentist who just wants a simpler system, Using these constant taper or four taper instruments, such as the sendo sequences that, the way I showed you, we managed to do this case with a single file, but a single file that was appropriate for that given case by doing proper gauging, which is the critical part of achieving adequate size determination so that you can actually touch the walls and, 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 and swipe up and carve out that last 
at three millimeter of the roots. These files rotating at 300 RPM, a file is rotating 10 times per second. But, and the fact that it's a triangle, that means every area of the canal is coming in touch with a blade cutting it 30 times per second. So you get a lot of action going on in a short period of time. You don't really need to sit in the canal and stay there too long. You just have to use adequately sized instruments Cut slowly, remove it a little bit, wipe the file clean, irrigate, disinfect, and move your way down, given the fact that you have a path. That was the original basis of the, uh, the ESX protocol that I had mentioned. The main key here is proper gauging of what's the appropriate size for your finishing, and you can achieve great uh, results successfully in a single visit when you do that. Now, if you believe in doing minimal invasive preparation and so on, finish up with a size 17 or 4 or 6, as I see some people are doing nowadays on the internet, then you do need to do chemical disinfection. So the question then becomes, you need to do those in two visits. Even though there are companies out there trying to sell you like $80,000 machines to say, that, oh, you could become more minimally invasive. We need to see more research supporting any of those claims yet, but done by independent sources to make sure that if you're going to have a cut down and go against the basis of endodontics for the past 50 years, which has been the idea of achieving gauging of removing the apical plug to an adequately anatomically sized apical preparation, until that's available, it's important that we consider and stick to this notion of achieving proper apical diameter. And if you're going to be a little bit shorter, then do those in two visits, leave cast hydroxide so that you can achieve hopefully a little bit more chemical disinfection. All right, anyway, so I just wanted to kind of do this video for you. I know it kind of became long in the tooth already. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you in terms of understanding what we're doing. I just want to once again, thank you all as our members, subscribers, and uh, kind of social media followers over the past uh, 10 years or so that you've been watching our content. It's, it's really a pleasure making these videos for you. As you know, I'm a one-man band. It takes quite a bit of time, but I enjoy it and I love it. And when I get the nice comments and your feedback and uh, you know things that you leave in the social media and the direct emails and stuff that you guys send me it always is fuel for me to do more of these videos so I hope this has all been so far helpful to you and I will continue to do more of these for as long as I can and I uh, hope that I'll see you in the next video very soon and until then let's save some teeth